Today in the shop, we have a 2017 F350. I'm gonna be removing the EGR on it and installing a Flow Pro blocker plate kit. Uh, keep in mind, this is for off-road use only, for race use. Uh, with this, you're also gonna to have to remove the stock exhaust, install like delete pipes or an aftermarket exhaust, and you're gonna to have to program the truck. Uh, for this truck, I'm using Easy Link with CCS Tunes. You can buy Easy Link with CCS Tunes from dirtydieselcustoms.ca. I strongly recommend them. They will ship uh, anywhere in North, they'll ship Canada and United States for the tuners and use Dark Iron 5. So Dark Iron capitals and then the number five. And I'll save you 5%, it helps me out too. Anyways, um, they will not ship the actual blocker plates and uh, exhaust though, they, if you live in the States. They'll ship it to Canada, but not across the border. So I will put another link down in the description if you need an exhaust or a blocker plate kit for your truck and you live in the States. Anyways, we are gonna get started on this truck. This is the kit I'm using, FlowPro 302, 201, that's the part number. Comes with instructions and manuals. I'm, I, like, I think I've maybe done one of these on a buddy's truck back in the day, so it's been a long time. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of follow through the instructions and bring you guys along. Kit comes with a hose, some hardware, some blocker plates, and uh, yeah. All I remember is that there's a couple of these pipes, where, especially this one where it goes down. The bolt heads are eight mil, so they're really tiny and they like to snap. And if you snap those bolts, then you gotta remove this whole intake and you gotta drill and tap and it's just really not fun. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna bring you along with me so you can see what this job entails if you wanna do it yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to disconnect the two negative battery terminals. And then we're going to grab two pails. I have the truck up on ramps right now just so I can slide five gallon pails underneath there. But there's, um, there's two drain plugs, one on this side. There's two rads on this truck, I don't know why, but there's one there and then there's another one on this side. So we're gonna be draining both of those radiators of the coolant. So yeah, the negative battery post and start draining the coolant, that's what we'll start with. They're both draining right now. It's the little, um, the drain valves, the drain plugs are really hard to get. I use like some pliers there and some little tiny vice grips just to kind of get in there and poke them or kind of twist them open. Keep in mind, they only turn about like maybe 180 degrees, something like that. They, they come out like that. They don't just unscrew like a plug. They kind of pull out as you twist them. So don't be too hard on them. They're just plastic. You don't want to break them. But uh, yeah, they are both draining. They were a pain in the ass though. And then I removed this cap and that cap just to let more air flow so they drain faster. Now we want to remove the, uh, your truck might look a little bit different than this depending on what year six, seven it is. But uh, we want to remove this box now. So it looks like on this truck, there's two eight mil bolts right there. And then there's the mass airflow sensor we're gonna have to unplug. We're gonna undo this, and then we should be able to pull that box out. Okay, air box is out. Now I'm going to remove uh, this pipe just by taking that eight mil or seven mil clamp, loosen it up, pop it off. And yeah, your truck might have like the air box thing here with the hoses clipped into it. The process is the same. You just wanna remove this intake off the truck. I'm kind of just doing my own thing now. I'm not really following instructions, so bear with me. This is how I'm gonna do it though. Uh, right now I wanna get these coolant lines out of the way, so I'm gonna take this uh, clamp and that clamp off, pry that off, and I'm just gonna get this and fold it off out of the way. And then I'm gonna work on these exhaust pipes because these are the worst and I hope they don't break any bolts. All right, now there's two eight mil bolts right there, two there, two there, and then two down there. And the ones down there are really scary. You really don't want them to break. Also, there's this bracket here. But anyways, you want to take this pipe and that pipe off uh, for this sensor. You can probably just unplug it for now. Unplug it and take the clip off, pull the sensor off. Uh, yeah, but these bolts down there can be a pain. Like there's one and the other one is down there. Can't really see it. It's back in there. Yeah, and they like to break. So hopefully they don't break. I soaked my down in some pen train fluid. I don't know if it really helps or anything, but yeah, we're going to remove these two pipes. Okay, the first one came off really nice, thank God. Uh, and what I'm gonna do right here, keep the gasket for it because you're gonna need to reuse it. But just before we do anything, I just wanna stuff something in there just like that. Because you don't wanna drop anything in there like another bolt because then you're totally screwed if you can't get it out. So, and if you did break one of those studs, don't worry, your life's not over. Just your weekend probably is because you're gonna be pulling this off, you're gonna be drilling and tapping and Good luck to you. But uh, yeah, just gonna pop this one off and then we should be deadly. All right, they're both out. I went ahead and installed this blocker plate right now. You reuse this gasket. And then it said to reuse the factory bolts, but 
see how they aren't threaded all the way to the bolt head and if i hold it like that see it wouldn't it wouldn't work it would bottom out too fast so there were new bolts in the kit so i just used new bolts right there that's in now i gotta figure out what i want to do next also i hate to be that guy but if you like comment and subscribe it really helps this video reach more people Okay, unless my ADHD tells me otherwise, I'm going to try to work on this these uh, wiring, this wiring harness and kind of get it off the EGR cooler. I don't know what this is. My truck has it on here, so I'm just gonna unclip it and move it off to the side. Uh, make sure again that your negatives are disconnected for your batteries. And then we're going to pull off, uh, maybe leave this one on, but I think we're gonna pull off these two for sure. And I mean, you're just gonna push this down and then pull it back and that's gonna pop it off. And yeah, we're going to try to just get this wiring harness away from the EGR cooler and just free up some more space. There looks like there's some bolts here that hold this kind of harness tray in place. We'll probably take those two bolts, one, two out as well, and just kind of get this, unplug it, unplug whatever sensors you can. It looks like this sensor goes over here. We'll want to unplug that too, probably even this guy, and just get all this harness off over to the passenger side here. Just once it's freed up and looks a lot more open, the job will look a lot less intimidating as well. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now and I'll check back in with you shortly. Okay, it looks way better right now. There's uh, this little vacuum line. I kind of just got out of the way. Um, yeah, I left this guy plugged in, unplugged these, those two guys there, and just folded everything off to the side here, unbolted that, and it's all free. But I do see up here, there's still that one plugged in, and then it, the harness goes down, and like, I'm not gonna be able to unplug the one that's on the turbo. I believe that's where it goes to. But this is super loose right now, so I'm not too worried about it, it looks great. I also unplugged this guy just by pressing both of these tabs, and then you can pop it off just to get it kind of moving around. Um, so yeah, so far this has been going good. Knock on wood that it keeps going good. But uh, yeah, it looks like there's this guy here. I'm, I'm gonna start pulling the EGR cooler out, I think. I'm gonna start unbolting it and just see what happens. And if I run into problems along the way, I will definitely let you know and we'll deal with them as they come. But for right now, it looks like there's this kind of black heat shield or whatever it is. There's two little twist tabs here. You. You spin them off or you use the upholstery tool and pop them out. One, two, right there. And then there's going to be bolts here, here. Uh, I don't know where the rest are. There's some on this side. There's back there. I believe there's like, I think this one too goes all the way through. There might be another one at the back that goes all the way through. But yeah, I'm gonna start unbolting this EGR cooler and seeing if I can remove it. And I'll, yeah, I'll just keep you posted along the way as to how it goes. And if I do get it out, I'll show you when it's out where all the bolts are. All right, I got most of the bolts out. I think there's only one left and it's back here. So I took the nut off that bracket and the nut that holds the EGR cooler on is underneath it. Problem is that bracket there, you can see it down to the left. It is, um, there it is, you can see it lit up. Uh, I can't bend that out of the way. And all that does, it's connected to some kind of sensor on one of the up pipes that goes to the turbo. So, uh, man, I don't know. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get, see back behind it, you can see there's, I could, un, I could wrench it and loosen it right off, but that's gonna be really hard to get a wrench like back in here, will it? Yeah, like, and it's an exhaust pipe. It's just gonna be really shitty. It's probably not gonna wanna come. So I think the play is to use a sawzall and just cut that bracket, like right here. I think that's the play. Oh God, I hope that is the play. Cause if I do that, I can't undo it. So, but yeah, I, I can't see it being a big deal. That's a solid metal line that's bolted onto the up pipe back there. So I can't see it being a big problem. It's not gonna be moving around much anyways. I don't think this bracket really matters. So I, I think the play is I'm gonna cut it, uh, but yeah, I'll get back to you shortly. Oh, I really hope that was the play. Look. Oh, it's hot. There. I don't think I damaged anything else in the process. See, that's still solid. Like it's like, I can't move it at all. So yeah, I don't think that bracket matters. Now I'm gonna take that bolt off. I think it's the last one, but we'll find out. Look at that, piece of piss, just a piece of piss, easy. 
Um, all right, here, let me show you on the EGR cooler. Okay, here's the EGR cooler, how it sits in the truck. So you have one, two, three, and then on this side you have one, two, three. So you have three and three, and then you have a sneaky second or a sneaky seventh bolt right here. But yeah, so there's seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then seventh one right there. So when I had those, those seven bolts out, I was trying to wiggle it and I couldn't wiggle it. So I thought there was another one. So I was searching around, couldn't see anything else. So I ended up grabbing a pry bar and just kind of stuck it in the EGR cooler. And just gave it a little thump upwards and then it broke it free. And I didn't realize, but now I do, is that there's two dowels right here. So the EGR sits on those two dowels and that's why it felt like it was still on there tight, even though the seven bolts were out. But yeah, I just had to kind of bust it up off those dowels and then you carefully pull it forward and up out of the truck. You have all your injectors here, so be very careful. Everything's friggin' plastic nowadays. So these are your injector return lines. You have your injector wiring harness. Like you don't wanna break any of that stuff. So bring it out really gently. And uh, yeah, I believe the older 6.7s have a wiring harness that's actually attached to the back of the EGR cooler that as you bring it forward, you gotta pry off. I might be wrong, but, uh, but yeah. So now we're gonna put this blocker plate on. We're gonna reuse this factory gasket. So boom, we'll put that block plate on. And then we're gonna put the block plate on here. Just make sure these O-rings aren't ripped or damaged. And then we'll do that. Okay, this one came with three new bolts and washers to mount that plate on. And now for this one, it wants to use the factory hardware again. Uh, I'm gonna use these. These are all I have kicking around the shop is these lock washers. What those are gonna do is, the, oh yeah. what those are gonna do is they're gonna make it so that I have threads all the way through because as you can see, these aren't threaded all the way to the bolt head. So we don't, we want it to thread all the way in. We don't want it to bottom out in the hole because then you're gonna leak here and you're not gonna have any boost and it's gonna make an awful noise. So yeah, I don't know, just make sure that this plate is secured when you mount it down there. Just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, reuse your factory gasket and you can put that blocker plate on now. All right, I put my wiring harnesses back in. I plugged everything in that I unplugged. Obviously you're gonna have these two plugs here aren't gonna go back into anything. And then this uh, vacuum line, I believe there's a plug that comes in the kit. I don't know where it goes. It'd be cooler if I could plug it off down there somewhere, but I don't see anywhere, so I'll just plug it off up here. Uh, this, this whole thing was pretty easy. Like, I can't see any lines that I need to reroute. This blocked off the coolant down there. There's only this line, which all you gotta do is grab a flathead and kind of pry these two clamps off. And then the kit comes with uh, an adapter, like a nipple. I'll go grab it and show you. So this, first of all, this rubber one here, this will be for the vacuum line. And what you're gonna wanna do is just pop this rubber piece off, the 90 degree angle piece, and then just slide this on top of it. That should take care of that. And then for this, like I said, I would just pry these two off here and then I would put this, I would just put these hoses right together and just get rid of this one because it doesn't go anywhere and use this guy. You're probably gonna want some new hose clamps for that because you're not really gonna be able to reuse these after you take them off. Other than that, I can't see anything else that needs to be done on this truck. Obviously, we're gonna put the air intake back in and after we do those couple little modifications, like I think we're it, then we're just gonna fill it up with coolant and put the batteries back on and check it for leaks and run up the temperature, probably off the top of the coolant again, and yada yada. Now, one thing I will mention is if you have an older style six, seven power stroke, because I believe the one time I did this before, it was on an older style. And I remember there was a hose that came up from here. You had to disconnect the hose in here and it was not fun. That's what that rubber hose is for, but I don't need to use that on this truck, which is super sweet. If you do have to use that rubber hose, there's probably another video out there on YouTube that will show you how to do it. But instead of unbolting it from down there, which is a pain in the ass, I would just cut the hose down there where you can get it, get at it easily and use one of these, just go buy a bigger one and then a couple hose clamps and then just connect it down there somewhere. That's what I would do if you have an older style power stroke. It just save you, save you a lot of struggle because you, I think you got to take the headlights out and the grill off to access that hose down there, it's not fun. But like I said, I'm just gonna modify that vacuum line and those that little coolant line, 
and uh, I'm gonna put the air intake back in place and then I'm gonna, yeah, if there's anything else that I need to mention, I'll be sure to do that. But other than that, like, I think we're pretty much done here. Okay, so I connected these two just like so. Um, this guy, I put this plug on and for this, like to get it off, I actually, if you can see it there, there it is. I actually cut it with a razor blade just because I couldn't get it off on its own. So I just gently slid it with a razor blade and yeah, I put my air intake back in, plug my mass airflow sensor up. Um, everything is hooked up. I put this weird module back where they had it mounted. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to add coolant. So obviously we're gonna add coolant in there and we're gonna add coolant in here. And yeah, Bob's your uncle, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna put coolant in it, hook up my batteries and we'll fire it up and make sure it all runs good. This is where you don't want it to go bang. Sounds good. I'm just gonna pull it off these jack stands too. There we go. Sounds fine. So far so good, don't see anything leaking. So yeah, I'm gonna just bring it outside and let it warm up and then top up the coolant. This truck's just running. So that's just running a delete pipe. It's using the factory exhaust, the factory tailpipe. I'm just gonna quickly insert this video in here. This is your throttle valve. I forgot to tell you, this has to be unplugged. So I'm just gonna unplug it right now. I usually use a flathead to pry the safety tab off, another flathead to push the other tab. And it's, hard. it's kind of a pain in the ass to get off. But this is the throttle valve. You have to unplug that when you're running a truck without emissions on it. So make sure it's unplugged. So I'm just running a 45 horsepower Easy Link tune on this truck. Nothing crazy. We want it to be good on fuel and we don't want it to smoke or anything like that. Just driving it right now, getting it up to temperature. Have to top up the coolant after. It'll probably ding at me pretty soon and say low coolant. That's totally normal. Uh, just don't go too far from the shop, in my opinion. Just uh, keep it close to the shop or keep some coolant on you so you can do it on the side of the road. Then when you're test driving it, just uh, make sure you got good boost. Uh, sometimes if you don't have those blocker plates down enough, especially that one on the exhaust, it'll kind of make a loud screeching sound. Uh, that's just boost pressure sip, slipping past the gasket. So this one sounds pretty good though. Yeah, it's been in the tires, so we're good. Um, but yeah, just remember dirtydieselcustoms.ca, get CCS tuning, uh, easy link for Power Stroke, or I usually use EFI Live for Duramax and Cummins. Use Dark Iron 5 for 5% off, it helps me out too. Like and subscribe, that helps me out a ton as well. Check out me on Instagram, give me a follow, at Dark Iron Diesel. But yeah, that's it. Um, really appreciate you guys watching. Really appreciate all the support I get from you guys. So, uh, and the odd girl that watches my channel, the 2% female viewers I have. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on another video.